Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Thrive Pet Design. Today I thought it would be a lot of fun if I showed you how I do like a typical water change. Um, I'm specifically going to be doing one of my paludarium today. Um, this is going to be coming in an update video later. I'm going to explain why this is in here. I have an air pump, or a sponge holder. <laughs> I figured out how to make my air pump quiet um, by doing that. But um, yeah, basically I'm going to be showing you how I do water change. Um, and before I get started, I wanted to do a quick shout out to King's Aquariums and Ant World. Uh, he puts out some really good content. It's very interesting stuff. And he just gave me a shout out yesterday. Ah. <laughs> My voice just got super hoarse. I'm so sorry. Um, but he just gave me a shout out yesterday and it was really nice. And he's a really good person and he shares some really interesting content. So there will be a link to his channel in the description. And I highly suggest that you check out his stuff. So the first thing that I like to do with every water change is I get all the equipment set up, so this is my siphon. And I actually like to, um, I have a good water bucket and not a bad water bucket, so that way nothing comes in contact. I have, I like to add in all the stuff first, so that way it gets completely mixed in the water. This is my water conditioner. Okay, now I have to go get the water. And then you get to do the penguin waddle back, because of how heavy the bucket is. <laughs> okay. Now usually with this tank, I don't do very many water changes because of how heavily planted it is. I don't think nitrates have even gone up be above 20 ppm because I don't know if you can see that. I literally have. <laughs> I have a piece of the lily. The roots are getting huge in that. You can't really see them because this drum is in the way where I'm raising some fish. Um, I'm going to explain this in a future video, but if you have any issues with it, feel free to discuss. But I've had some baby fish in here for a little bit and they've been doing really well. Um, if you're confused, I'm filming this a little bit beforehand, but I have some very exciting new additions in this tank that I'm going to be showing off. <laughs> Usually what I do is I drain the water, then I do filter maintenance, and then um, that's pretty much it. Then I just put the new water back in. Okay, so I'm definitely going to have to do a lot of editing with this film angle because um, you're probably going to be able to see me, so I'm definitely, if you see any weird filming or like modifications, it's because I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> And I hope you guys respect that, because uh, I'm also in my PJs. This is a typical um, quarantine Sunday, I guess. Well, I mean, it's also like early, so it's kind of like normal anyways. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to start the water change by first getting the suction flow going on, um, well, on the vacuum head, basically, oof, that's heavy. See guys, something really cool about owning a fish tank is that you also get a workout whenever you do water change, because a gallon of water is like 10 pounds. <laughs> okay, so I learned this one from Girl Talks Fish. I actually didn't know how to do this before. You just dip it under, and then you start to put pull it back up. Oh, I don't like how this is suctioned. So my thing usually gets plugged up really fast because I have a lot of like, well I have a sandy substrate so it's really easy to notice any fish waste, but I also have cocoa fiber on top of the paludarium and it tends to fall in once in a while and it sinks because it's <laughs> in a paludarium so it's constantly wet. So it looks like my, like the sand substrate is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Um, and if you're wondering, I'm leaning over like this, it's so I can get a look at the tank, and also I have to make sure I'm not sucking up any snails or shrimp or anything. I only have a few shrimp in here right now, but I'm actually looking to start breeding them, because I used to breed them in my old tank before I started this channel. And I made a lot of money selling those, that was... Actually, it was extremely, like, profitable as a thing to do. And it was really sustainable because they just kind of took care of themselves <laughs> and it would uh, pay for me basically doing whatever I needed to do with fish or shrimp. Okay, 
So I'm just going to kind of let it go now because I actually think that most of the gunk in here is like under the substrate and it's going to be the stuff that I'm going to start getting, you know, once I actually get to it. And by the way, before I started, I unplugged everything. That's an important step in this. Because if you don't unplug everything, like sometimes it's not... <laughs> Oh, I just got some Java moss. You don't want that. I like the Java moss. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to be breeding blue dream shrimp in here. I also have mystery snails going, but they sell for like 25 cents each, so I don't think I'm going to make like any money off of those. I have a ton of bladder snails in here. It's like bad almost how many I have. <laughs> I didn't even mean to get them. I don't, I don't know. I used to be like, What's the word? The, the, I learned it Latin. I used to be like violently against nuisance snails, and I think it's just because everyone told me that. And then I kind of learned more about them, and I learned like, oh, they're actually really beneficial to the ecosystem in your tank. They help keep stuff cleaner. They help produce natural waste. They help, you know, just kind of break down stuff. So I don't really care anymore. Okay, I think that should be enough water. Removed his, that looks like half of it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know how much water I take out. I usually just eyeball it based on how long it's been since I did the last water change. Usually, actually with the paludarium, I know most people will probably like kill me for this. <laughs> a lot of people say that, um, well, you should do, you know, your weekly water changes or whatever. Um, with the plant, in my opinion, okay, I'm gonna put like 10 million disclaimers. In my opinion, you really don't need to do water changes as much as everyone tells you if you have a heavily 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 planted tank like this now i'm not talking about like if you have like one amazon sword and one piece of java fern that's not heavily planted i'm talking if you have like this many plants i don't believe you need to do as many water changes as people tell you because i've gone like a month without doing water changes in tank like this and i check the parameters and i still have no nitrates like it's perfect the only reason I actually do water changes is because it adds fresh nutrients back into the system, which is actually really important when you're when you're breeding stuff, like snails and shrimp that require the nutrients, especially like in their shells, because you know they have these exoskeletons. That's really important um, to make sure that those are healthy. But like honestly, I if <laughs> like I think people realize, I don't think people realize there's a lot less they can be doing to take care of their fish and shrimp and snails. Like, whoops. <laughs> that was my aquarium mood. <clears throat> my throat has been getting so tingly and I have no idea why. <coughs> <clears throat> it happens when I talk and I don't drink enough water. <laughs> I nerd everyone to drink a glass of water so you don't sound like me. I need to do filter maintenance because my Zoomag waterfall pump broke. Well, it didn't break, but it's not actually producing any flow anymore, which is like a yikes moment. Because I paid $27 for this filter and it stops working every single week. I do not like it. I do not approve of it. And there's literally a piece missing from it. Where did it go? just involves taking it off and then replugging it in like that. <laughs> so I'm going to start pouring in some of the fresh water. Um, but yeah, at the beginning you saw that I already added all my conditioners and stuff. <laughs> this is not as fun as you think it was. <laughs> like, this is very heavy. I do not appreciate that I only have one hand full of this. Uh, I have... <laughs> fun fact, I actually, I think I mentioned I used to breed shrimp. I s made a lot of money selling, um, I actually bred the wild type, which is like, controversial. I don't even know if you can see that by like, controversial. Um, a lot of people, I think a lot of people have the logic. It's like if everyone bred them, then there would be none of the colorful ones. 
But um, no one breeds them. I mean, that's why I made so much money, because I was the only one breeding them. Um, I actually rehomed the entire collection when I set up this tank, and now I'm solely doing Blue Dream Shrimp, because I like the colors better. Um, <laughs> I actually found that the wild types were more friendly than the colorful ones. It was so funny. They were so cute. Like, I would have, like, six of them on my hand at the same time, and then there'd be, like, one colorful one. Um, I, in the tank, I had a lot of different types of fit, uh, shrimp. It was really cool, because it, um, I don't know why, because I've seen a lot of people say you can't keep neocaridinas and caridinas in the same tank, and I get the, the parameters, but I actually had crystal red shrimp and cherry red shrimp and blue dream shrimp all breeding in the same tank. <laughs> Obviously, I'm probably gonna get... I don't know if hate would be the right word, I'm gonna get dissenting opinions, because I don't think hate is the right word, I think a lot of people just strongly believe in their opinion, but I also believe in mine, And there, but there is also a reason I stopped breeding them, because I do agree that these are really cool color variations, and I didn't want to, like, <laughs> take away from that. And also, like, it just... I don't know, I think there's something really cool about the colorful ones, they just kind of pop in your tank. Ultimately, I think... I think, um, once you take the, like, the color of the animal away, I don't think, like, once you take the color of the animal away, it was just kind of cool just to see these wild-type shrimp, to see how they interacted with the environment, how they disappeared. It was just cool because they were just shrimp, it wasn't, like, the color, they, I wasn't selling them for super high prices, I was selling them for, like, <laughs> I don't think I, I think I sold, like, 50 of them for $50. Um... And I made my money selling the wild type shrimp like that, and it was just like, I don't know, it was really, really, real. no, I did 50 for $20. I should have done $50. <laughs> I was really cheap with my prices, but I think because they were breeding like wild, like they were just so healthy for me. And they didn't, because they were from a diverse gene pool, they didn't have any of the health issues that are associated with super inbred shrimp. <laughs> I feel like I'm not expressing my opinion. If anyone would like to discuss, I'm totally willing to. I really would love to get back into the breeding though, which is actually why I picked up the these in the bowl that you guys are going to see more about soon. Um, but I picked them up because I would like to, you know, breed them and get back, back into that breeding and that's why I picked up the isopod culture because I'm going to sell them because they make a lot of money, um, especially with how easy their care is. But uh, I need to check because I know there are laws and there are USDA regulations. So I'm going to email someone in my state about that, So, because I don't want to be breaking the law. We don't break laws here. <laughs> Oops, imagine if all my, my inner fry got out. Honestly, they probably did. I just realized that this container was uh, really, like, underwater, and they could have totally gotten out. Um, the reason I don't want them getting out is because they might get eaten. It also makes it easier for me to feed them four times a day is what I like to do when I'm raising baby fish because I do have quite a bit of experience raising baby fish actually. I raised Emperor Tetra Fry, which is a video coming soon. <laughs> well, not in the video where I raised them, but I made, I did it by accident, which was really, really, really cool as a fish keeper, as someone getting into the hobby. Because everyone always talks about how their fish died when they first brought them home. I think it was it was two months after I brought my fish home. I had baby fish in the tank. It was on my birthday. I saw baby fish in the tank and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm living the dream, the pet keeper dream. I have baby fish. And I still have them in here actually. Seven out of, I have seven out of the 10 fish that I originally bought a year ago. Um, some of them just passed away from like health issues. Um, the one of them I know why, oh, I know why two of them passed away. One of them I have no idea. The body looked completely perfect, it might have been something more internal like liver failure that you can't see, but I think, I don't know, I think liver failure usually causes like dropsy, but I didn't, I don't know, I didn't see anything. Like it just, like looked like it just peacefully passed away, sadly. Like and that's, I can still say that that's sad because I was, I get upset every time I see something has passed away in here. Like even seeing like a dead snail, it's like, yeah, well I only live a year, but it's also like, <laughs> but I cared for it, you know. I feel like this is the most boring video. I hope I have some interesting commentary in here though, because I feel like I feel like I have a lot of normal opinions, especially on like enclosure size and stuff. But I feel like I have some really unique kind of dissenting opinions, especially when it comes to things like wild type shrimp, water changes. 
I feel like a lot of people over filter their tanks and I feel like a lot of people don't put enough live plants. So the last thing that I need to do is I need to wipe off the glass and I turn the sponge filter back on. Okay, I was playing Stardew Valley yesterday. Great game, by the way. I am so happy. I'm okay, like, look, my character, I married Alex on the farm. Okay, and the little baby child person just grew up into a toddler and it walks around. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people who don't play games have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. But I'm really into, like, the wholesome games, okay? Like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. I like Minecraft. <laughs> You could probably see it on my computer on any of my screen recordings. It's in my, like, the bar thing of my computer. Like, the, what's it, the dock? Is that what it's called? Um, <laughs> it's on the dock. Uh, what else do I play? I play Legend of Zelda. Um, I, I think I, I play wholesome games, but I think I watch more violent games and more, like, scary games. Um, I can't even think of what I play. Oh, I like to play Pokemon. Pokemon's fun. I play a lot of Nintendo, basically. Um, there's totally another game that I play, like, all the time. Okay, I play Terraria. One Shot is my favorite game of all time. If you don't know what One Shot is, I'm very disappointed. Because it's such a deep game. The music is absolutely beautiful. Um, the main character is so cute. And it's such- it's a meaningful game. I mean, it's a meaningful experience. And, um, yeah, basically I like video games. I have a video game music playlist. <laughs> it has, like, 800 views, and I think they're all for me, but I would actually know. Because <laughs> I listen to it, like, all the time. Like, that's just what I listen to, because video game music is such a bop, okay? Don't at me. Um, okay. So I'm gonna put this lid back on. Glass. It's so dirty. <laughs> It's dirty because, I, okay, fun fact, I had another piece of this because I bought the Aquion 20 gallon lid and then I cut off the black piece in the middle and separated them because this is a palladarium and I wanted plants growing out of the back half. Um, so I cut it in half, but um, the other one that had the handle on it, I put it down on the floor and I stepped on it. <laughs> I don't even know how I did this and I don't even know how I did it without cutting my foot open, like, I was completely fine, like, I didn't even get any glass, it broke off, it wasn't even, it didn't even, like, shatter, I mean, like, I vacuumed the floor, but there was, like, two big pieces, that was it, um, which was really nice, because I didn't hurt myself, which is always a win. Okay, fun fact, everyone, I was literally ranting for so long that my iPhone storage ran out, so... <laughs> basically i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you would like to discuss debate talk about anything i just wanted to let everyone know that i actually do change my opinions a lot so if you don't disagree with anything that i said or you think that it is wrong for me to promote something let me know because i am definitely willing to own up to it you know and i'm willing to learn more from someone who has a different opinion and a different experience um <laughs> especially on things like shrimp, because I'm definitely not an expert. I've only kept them for like a year. Um, but yeah, this was a lot of fun to film. I'm sorry that my phone cut off. I, I, you guys were too much fun to talk to, I guess. Um, also, sorry if the editing was wonky, just because I don't want to be on camera. Because um, <laughs> I'm wearing my sheep pajama bottoms and my Legend of Zelda shirt, so uh, it's not quite fashionable. <laughs> I don't even, no, I did comb my hair this morning, but I haven't, like, you know, like, when you wake up and you have bedhead, I feel like I still have bedhead, but, um, if you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my content, because I will make more stuff like this if it seems like it's really, really interesting to you guys. Please subscribe to King's Aquariums and Ant World, just because he puts out really, really interesting stuff, like, he was, he just breads and pleco babies, and it's, like, a total inspiration for me as someone who's really trying to find a way to fund my aquarium hobby. I'm really going to be going for those money fish soon, like the epistogramas. Epistogramma? Epistogramma? I don't know how to pronounce it, because I say, like, garam- garam- I used to say epistogrammy, and I was like, that's wrong. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely going to be going for those big fish. So he's really a big inspiration to anyone who's interested in doing stuff like that, and he shares our ant content, which is really cool, too. Yeah, it was really interesting to learn more about his stuff. He gave me a shout out, which was the, literally the nicest thing, because I've gained like three subscribers from that, which was really, really, really helpful. Like, and I really hope that you guys can show him that support as well, because <laughs> he makes awesome stuff. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.
拜。